Hey everybody, I hope you're having a blessed day. In today's video, I've got something interesting going on. I've got my Gorilla Grills pellet grill here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the controller, and I'm also gonna show you how to replace the power cord. Two projects that I think several people out there might be interested in. When you come back, we'll get right to it. Hey everybody, I'm Richard, little bit of everything. Welcome back to the channel, so glad to see you. So in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is, um, first of all, I apologize for the lighting and the audio. I'm in my sunroom, which isn't the best place for audio. And secondly, it is, winter has peaked its head around the corner here where I'm at and uh, up by the, I'm up by Chicago about two hours away. So we're starting to see some cold, dreary weather. The fall front came through, changed everything. So it's cold day here. So anyway, I'm in my sunroom with my grill because I have a project that I want to get to um, because I have Thanksgiving coming up. I've got several things that I need to be using my uh, pellet grill for. And I have a problem. My controller went out um, and I have to say a word about Gorilla Grills here. I've had this uh, silverback uh, pellet grill now for five years. I was actually probably on one of the uh, initial lines of, of this grill to come out because I had the original controller that came with this grill and I have a video that shows you how to replace the uh, temperature probe in your silverback and the problems that I ran up against when I did that. So go check that out. Um, but here recently I was getting ready to use my grill and the controller wouldn't come on, um, had all kinds of issues with it. So I contacted Gorilla Grills and first of all, Gorilla Grills customer service is still a person that you talk to. It's not a a uh, series of questions you get asked by a phone. It's, it's, it is a person you can call or you can email or you can text and chat with them. And I chose email because that's what I've always done. So I contacted them and told them about the problem that I was having, that I applied power. I wasn't getting any, um, I wasn't getting anything to come on. Did they have some ideas of what might be going on? And also prior to me having those issues, when I moved into this house, I was having all kinds of trouble getting the controller to Wi-Fi connect. They had, they had all of that stuff in their logs. They contacted me back and said, Richard, we're sending you a brand new Wi-Fi controller, free. These things are almost $200. And so that's the reason I do business with Gorilla Grills. I think I paid, originally paid $700 for this grill. So a third of the price was the controller and they sent it to me free of charge. No questions asked, just packed it up and shipped it to me. And here it is, here's the controller. Another quick story. So we're, we're closing in on Thanksgiving here where I'm at. A year ago last Thanksgiving, I had some friends over and we did Thanksgiving dinner. And the day after Thanksgiving on Friday, traditionally we'd do something else, barbecue, Mexican, whatever, whatever it was, uh, whatever, whatever everybody wants, sorry. And they all chose steak. And a good friend of mine brought some beautiful steaks and uh, we cooked those up. And one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to originally um, uh, pre-cook them here in the grilla. And long story short, uh, we did all of that, but somehow I managed, and I don't know how I do this, but somehow I managed to get the cord here and I'll bring you in here and, and show you a, um, a close-up shot. So you see this cord right here has got um, connections on it because what happened was I got this cord too close to the base and it melted it. In the middle of the cook, boom, the grill shuts off. Of course, we're panicking because the stakes are on here. So we real quickly um, peeled back both ends of this and then um, put those uh, electrical uh, nuts on there so that we could get back to the cook, which worked. And I've been cooking that way ever since, but you know, I've decided that it's time to fix that as well since I'm putting in the new controller. So I ordered a cord. So that's what today's project is gonna be. I'm going to show you how to replace the electrical cord on your Gorilla Grill Silverback along with installing the new controller. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so obviously the very first thing that needs to happen is this controller needs to come off. So, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. There's two screws on this 
controller. And that's all you need to remove it, are these two screws. Pretty simple. With the controller removed, you can see pretty quickly how this thing connects. So, okay, and so what I'm gonna have to do then is I'm gonna have to cut these three tie straps because these three connections right here are what connect to the new controller. This connector right here goes into the heat probe that's inside of the grill itself, and it's just a simple disconnection. So let me get these three disconnected and we'll get on to the next step. All right, so let me show you the connections. It's really pretty simple, but they make it very simple. You've got, I'm gonna set the controller down. You've got a uh, two-pronged yellow going into a two white and yellow. This is a jumper wire running over to this one right here. This is where you get your power. This is black and two whites. This is a green and two whites. And this is a purple and a white. If you look at the new controller, those are exactly what you have on the new controller. You have the black, with the two whites, you have the yellow with the two whites, you have the purple and white, and then you have the green and two whites. And then this is the connection that goes to um, the, uh, the, the heat probe inside uh, of, the, of the silverback. So you've got all of your connections. It's really simple. You just unplug those and then plug these in. Here's where my problem lies. So I'm wanting to replace the, um, the cord itself. And here is the cord, and I'm gonna show you a close-up. This runs down inside of the uh, silver back, and there's a standoff in there. And then this green wire right here goes to a, a ground post that's inside. So no big deal. I go in there, I take that post off, I pull this off. But this is a connector right here. So I have to figure out, am I going to just splice these together uh, on the new cord? Here's, here's my new cord. Let me pull it out so you can see what I'm dealing with here. Here's the new cord. You've got your black and your white, which are going to be those two wires. You've got your green, which is that wire that goes back inside but you notice they're not on this plug, and this plug right here is what's on the uh, new controller. So I need to either figure out if I'm gonna try to reuse a plug like this, which means I'm gonna have to go order it, and then make that connection that way, or if I'm just gonna splice that black to that black, that white to those two whites, and then put the green on the post on the inside. Um, let me do a little research and I'll get back to you. All right, so through the magic of television, I went ahead and ran to the, uh, to the hardware store and I picked something up. So I've picked up these uh, male and female connectors. I picked up three different sizes. I wasn't really sure. It's everywhere from uh, 22 gauge on up to uh, 10 gauge. And I'll show you how these work here in a minute. These are the solution that I've, I'm turning to to fix this problem with trying to get these wires uh, connected. Now, I could have just soldered them together. I could have done a lot of different things, but, but because I know me, uh, I may melt this power cable again someday. So <clears throat> I wanna be able to make sure that I can replace this again if I ever have to. So let me kind of walk you through the process of what I'm planning on doing here. So, so right here is the power cable and it's running through a grommet on the inside of there. So <clears throat> one of the nice things about this um, grill is there are six screws, two here, two on the side, and then two on the back, that once you release those screws, this whole bottom cage slides out. And now, as you can see, I have access to the grommet that allows me then to pull this cord through, and then I can, do, uh, I can feed the, the new cord through, bring it back up, and I can make my connection. So, I'm going to put you on a time lapse so that you can watch me walk through that step and then when I'm done I'll uh, just bring you up to speed on everything that I did.
Okay, this was some kind of interesting grommet that was in here. It took me a long time to figure out how to get this thing out. This was in this hole here. I'm trying to make sure you can see that. The hole here, this is at the bottom of the grill. And this is where the power cable came through. And they apparently pinched this thing together. Let me take this. They pinched this thing together and stuff it through this hole. And then in order to get it out, you have to pinch it on the back side and pull it back through. I messed with it and messed with it and messed with it. Finally got it. But what I wanted to show you was, I think this grommet does as much damage as it does good. Look what it did to this power cable. I mean, I don't know if if that is the way it's supposed to be, but boy, that, that really, I don't know if you can see it. See how it pinched that? So I'm going to go get a standoff grommet that I have um, in my uh, electrical box, and I'm going to replace that. But anyway, uh, if you try to take this grommet out in the future, it comes out in two pieces, and you have to pinch it together on the bottom side and then push it back through the hole, and that's how you get it out. I completely destroyed it trying to figure out how to get it out, but I got it out. All right, so here we are back with this um, plate here, and this is the hole that the power cord's going to come through. I have this strain relief. Um, it's an electrical strain relief that I have in my supply, which is what I'm going to use to replace the broken plastic one. Of course, just like every other job I ever do, this wouldn't quite fit in the hole. What you see here is uh, I have to loosen these screws, but the strain relief <clears throat> will allow the cord to come through. It'll allow the cord to come through and then you tighten these down and it creates a, uh, a pressure on that cord. Not unlike the one that was here, only I won't be bending it, you know, like that one is. That's just as really deformed and that'd be a little bit concerning. But anyway, so I'll be putting this through. The only problem was this hole wasn't big enough originally. So I had to use this step drill bit. I don't know if you've seen these before, but you can see that it's got little grooves on it um, that will allow you to make holes bigger. And I just drilled through this using the step bit on both sides to enlarge the hole just enough to get this strain relief on. Then I used a rat tail file to file off all the shavings on the inside. So now I'm able to insert this into the hole and tighten it down. So this will give me a replacement for the uh, strain relief that I removed that they had on there that um, I didn't really like that well. I need to get this position so that the screws are down here so that I can tighten them. But that's what I'm gonna be using in replace of what they had on there. Okay, so I have the new power cord um, through, you can see the strain relief there. I have it brought through the strain relief. So now I have the cord that I need to go do the connection inside the grill. So let me show you how I'm going to do that and the solution I come up with. All right, so what we got going on here is I've got the uh, power cable. I loosened it in the grommet so that I could run it up in here and work on it while I was in this space and I didn't have to. Uh, worry about it uh, in the grommet. So when I get done, I will put the cover back in and then I'll tighten the grommet down. So, but this way I have uh, loose wires here that I can work with. So here are the three wires. The first thing I have to do is I've got to get a outlet um, on the end of this uh, so that I can screw it back into that hole in there where we um, took it out of so that we can ground it to the unit itself. I have these uh, selection of eyelets and granted I've I've had this for a while because I do a lot of electrical work on my truck and I bought these off of Amazon I'll leave a link in the description down below but what I need to find is one that uh, fits the screw that I took off of there so um, I suspect it's going to be this green one right up here the small green one right here 
We'll see if that works. There's, there's actually an, a smaller one right there. Yeah, this green one right here is the one I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna get this crimped on the wire, um, and then I'll go ahead and get that attached inside, and then we'll work on how I'm going to attach the uh, power and the, uh, the white wire as well. So let me get that done. All right, so the idea is to get this wire crimped here. Slide it in there. So you can see that the wire just kind of peeks through the end there. That's kind of what you want. And then I have these um, crimpers that I bought online. And I'm going to set it right inside there, making sure I have the wire exposed where I want it. Crimped on there. Release. Pop that out, that's crimped on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed. As you can see there, we've got that installed back on the uh, post. So now let's talk about how we're gonna get these two other wires taken care of here. <clears throat> so uh, the requirement is I've got these two power wires. And if you remember right, they go into this this black and white cable here i've got the white end that has to go in there and the black end has to go in there but obviously i don't have the connector for these so i have got to cut these off and i'm going to be putting uh, a different kind of connector on these um, i'm going to uh, cut these off here and I'm going to strip them back and I'm going to be putting different kinds of connections on these and I'm going to be using these male female connectors that I've got in here. Um, I'm going to use a larger one for the double and then I'll use the smaller one for uh, the black and that way I'll be able to slide these apart when I need to if I ever have to replace this. So let me show you how I'm going to manage this. Okay so these are the connectors I'm going to use. Um, you'll notice that one has uh, a male end and one has a female end and you see that slot in there that slides into you, you put these two together and they just pop pop in and snap and then if you ever want to take them apart you pop them apart so that's what I'm going to be doing so I'm going to be using a larger one on uh, the white wire because it has to go to two white wires on the other side the black one I'll be using the uh, red one for that so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these all crimped up and then I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. All right, so as you can see, I've got all the connections made here. So everything is ready to be connected. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything connected and then we're going to actually do a power uh, check to make sure that the power is working. Um, I'm sure that this will kick on the controller, but I'll try to get that turned off really quick. And um, I just want to do a real quick check to make sure my power is um, working. So let's get all of the connections made and then we'll check the power. All are temporary plugged in. So we are going to plug the cord in. And we are going to see if we get power. Ah, power. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. Now I can go in and I can seal everything up on the inside. Okay, I've got the box re-secured. You can see the screws back in here. So the bottom is back in, uh, the cord is out so I can get that plugged in. I've got the strain relief tightened. Now it's just a matter of tie strapping these together, putting these back inside the box here so they're out of the way, feeding this back in and then going ahead and screwing this on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it outside, plug it in and then we're gonna get the Wi-Fi set up on it.
All righty then, we've got everything back in place. We're gonna roll this thing outside and we're gonna get it fired up. Hey there, everybody. So as you can see, and probably here, the gorilla is up and running. So everything was successful. I got it hooked up to the Wi-Fi. I've got it preheating up to 250 degrees just to give it a test. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that do that. The smoke's starting to roll. I can smell it right now. So um, let's get that done and then we'll finish up the video. Okay, so welcome back. So we're gonna wrap this video up. I've got the, um, uh, the Gorilla on cool down right now. It's going through its cool down procedure. Um, everything worked great with the test. So the Wi-Fi works, the power works. So I kind of wanted to talk to you about both of these different uh, jobs that I did. Connecting the, the new um, controller and connecting the new power cord. So if you do one or the other, your installation is going to be different. If you're just putting the power cord on, um, you may be able to find a different way to make that power connection. The way that I did it worked, as you can see that it worked. So um, if you don't have the other end of that uh, connector to be able to make that connection, you can do it the way that I did. If you're just going to be connecting a new Wi-Fi controller to your uh, Gorilla, follow the process of just disconnecting the old controller and reconnecting the new one. It's that simple. I mean, one, boom, you're done. Then you can reinstall the controller, go through the setup procedure and get your uh, Gorilla up and running again. But because I also had decided that I needed a new power cable, that created a different set of circumstances in this. So you can look at this video and do two different things. Or if you also need to replace a power cable, I hope that this shows you how you can do that and still um, you know, not have any real issues with getting it done. Um, one thing to say is I did make that power cable disconnectable case I do something stupid again and get that cable it actually melted off the side of here I had, I used to run the cable right in between here just to kind of wrap it and it was too close to the side here and that's why it melted so now I have it underneath the grill completely so I hope that you enjoyed this video I hope that you learned something uh, I'm going to transition now to the faith-based portion of my video I hope you'll stick around and watch that if you've got any questions you want to engage with me anything at all whatsoever holler at me I'll be glad to do that uh, so until the next time, don't forget God loves you so very much and so do I. We'll talk to you on the next one. Hello everyone and welcome to the faith-based portion of my video, Faith Changes Everything. I'm Pastor Richard and I'm so grateful you're here with me. If this is your first visit to FCE, welcome. On this channel, I try to impart a message of hope, of love, and I'm here to let you know that there's a Savior who wants to have a personal relationship with you. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm so blessed and humbled that you're here spending your time with me. So today, I wanna to talk to you about a subject that I've spoken about on this channel before. I've kind of skirted the issue, but looking back, I've never really talked about it at length, and it's pretty clear to me when I read my devotionals today, it's something that God wants me to talk about. I'm sure, if you're like me, you've wondered in the past, what in the world does God want me to do with my life? There are those that had that correct direction from a very young age and knew where to go for the answer. Then there are those who never really totally understood where to go and still yet, there were those and I put myself in this category that knew where to go, but chose to try to figure it out for themselves. That last category, the one that I fit in, is probably one of the saddest categories, honestly, uh, because even though I knew the truth, I chose to fulfill my own needs and desires first. Only when I figured out that my choices is what put me in the place that I'm at, and I never thought that I would be in this spot, that I ended up in, only then did I understand the truth of my choices. I want to try to help you avoid that lie. I want to help you understand there is only one truth and there's really only one place to find it. So without any further ado, let's talk about 
God's will for your life. Before I start each message, I would like to say a prayer for the words that I'm going to speak and for the ears that will hear them. If you'll bow your head with me now as I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity you've given me to sit in this space and give this message. I know this is your will for my life, to use this place as a conduit to your world, to give those out there the truth of your word, to not mix it up in worldly doctrine, to speak the meaning of your will, to not hide from the exactness of your desires for our lives, and to make sure we understand where we need to go to hear those words and to understand the meaning in our lives. Father God, help the one that is listening that you know needs to hear and understand, that all they know about self-help and worldly vice not where we are intended to find our truth. There is only one place to go. That is your word. And that is through Jesus Christ. I am humbled and grateful. All of this in the name of your precious Son. Amen. It is a beautiful Saturday morning where I'm at the sun's coming into the sunroom here. So I, I just i am so thankful and grateful to be here with you guys this morning as we talk about God's will for your life. Let's go ahead and begin in Romans 12 verses 1 through 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. To sum up, God's revealed will is the kind of God-honoring lifestyle God desires for His people as revealed in Scripture, which boils down to, as Jesus said, and, and I have mentioned a thousand times on this channel, loving God and loving others. But it will take wisdom and help to discern how best to live out His will in particular circumstance. This verse in Romans tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. But what does that mean? Again, simply stated, renewing your mind according to Romans 12 2 means interpreting life through the lens of God's Word and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, rather than through the lens of your experience, the woundedness, trauma, preferences, or other opinions of others which seems to be what everyone thinks is the right way to do it these days. You know, each of us has been blessed by God with numerous talents. Some of these talents help you run your home life. Some make your career possible. Others are utilized by God in the context of ministry. It's a privilege to have been created with, this, with these skills, but it also creates a problem. At some point in your life, you've, you, you're going to have to decide between the things you can do and want for yourself and the things you must do to fulfill His will for your life. That is the crossroads that I found myself at. I want to read this verse and I want to talk a minute about the man who said these words. The verse is in Jeremiah 20 verse 9. If I say I'll never mention the Lord or speak his name. His word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. So the man in question, obviously, since the verse is from Jeremiah, is Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah, he lived in the final days of the crumbling nation of Judah. He was appropriately the last prophet that God sent to preach to the southern kingdom, which comprise the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. Now, God had repeatedly warned Israel to stop their adulterous behavior, but they would not listen. So 
he tore, tore the 12 tribes apart, sending the 10 northern tribes into captivity at the hands of the Assyrians. Then God sent Jeremiah to give Judah the last warning before he cast them out of the land, decimating the nation and sending them into captivity in the pagan kingdom of Babylon. Jeremiah, a faithful, God-fearing man, was called to tell Judah that because of their unrepentant sin, their God had turned against them and was now prepared to remove them from the land at the hands of a pagan king. No doubt, Jeremiah had great inner turmoil over the fate of his people and he begged them to listen. He is known as the weeping prophet because he cried tears of sadness, not only because he knew what was about to happen, but because no matter how hard he tried, the people would not listen. Furthermore, he found no human comfort. God had forbid him to marry or have children, and you can read about that in Jeremiah 16:2. His friends had turned, to, turned their backs on him, so along with the burden of the knowledge of impending judgment, he also must have felt very, very lonely. But God knew this was what was the best course for Jeremiah because he went on to tell him how horrible the conditions would be in a short time. We read what God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 16, 3 and 4. For this is what the Lord says about the sons and daughters born in this land and about the women who are their mothers and the men who are their fathers. They will die of deadly diseases. They will not be mourned or buried, but will be like dung lying on the ground. They will perish by sword and famine, and their dead bodies will become food for the birds and wild animals. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody came to me telling me that about me, I would have problems with it as well. But can you imagine knowing this about your people and how frustrating it must have been for Jeremiah to, Jeremiah to desperately be trying to get his people to listen to him, begging them to repent, begging them to turn from their evil ways, to look to God and ask for forgiveness, only to be cast out and physically assaulted for his part. You see, the prophecies preaching gets him beaten and thrown in prison, persecuted and denounced. And you can feel when you read this that his mind is looking for a way to just find an easier road. But whenever he thinks this, the Word of God burns in him and he just cannot contain it. For Jeremiah, the thing that he must do is speak out God's name. He says that in verse 9 when he says, His Word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones and I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed. Jeremiah has just been beaten and put in stocks for doing what God called him to do. In his prophecy, he foretells that the road will continue to be difficult. People are looking for mistakes in his words. They're looking for ways to discredit him because they don't like what he's saying. And I guess I can't blame them for that. It appears from his words that Jeremiah would like to walk away from the continued conflict or maybe just do something easier. But he recognizes that this is his calling. God's word burns in him and God has put a need in his heart to be a public spokesman for truth. I will say that most men are not called to be public spokesmen like, like Jeremiah was, but we're all called to be something. Just like Jeremiah's responsibility, the calling is both exciting and heavy. We're honored to have been chosen and gifted to accomplish it, but the calling today is lived out in an imperfect, critical world, and we soon find that there are many activities that are easier on us than pursuing the place of service God has called us to. At these times, the only thing that will keep you at the task is the overwhelming sense that you were made for this. So let me ask you this. What must you do? What is it that you must accomplish in your lifetime? What activities seem easier but distract you from your real calling? I find myself saying to myself a lot these days, Jesus, just give me the wisdom to clearly see what must be done in my life. This channel, both 
Faith Changes Everything that is connected to my little bit of everything channel honestly grew out of my desire to spread God's word. But I had, I had no idea at the time I started LBE that this faith channel was anything that I'd be doing. The reason I started LBE in the first place is because I was constantly doing some kind of task or tinkering with something, fixing things, building things. And because I always went to YouTube to seek advice, it occurred to me one day that I have all of the audio and video equipment. I could make these videos. And when I bought and decided to refurbish a big green egg, I thought it was the perfect time to try my hand at launching my own channel. I will tell you that almost immediately, the thought of doing the faith portion began to grow in me. I, did, I didn't ever start out and intend to be a spokesperson of God on this channel. God put that need in me. He grew it. He fostered the thought in me. He told me to use this platform for Him. I'm an, I am an ordained minister, but up until I started this channel, I never stood up in front of people and spread His word. This was really not who I was. There, there were other people. I mean, other people were called to do that. I never in a million years believed that I was supposed to be doing this. But I'm going to tell you, and I believe now, and if you're hearing these words, please understand that what God wants from you right now is to start to seek Him and begin to open your heart and mind to the possibilities of His will for your life. Just like me, He planted the seed that grew in me. I, you know, I look back and I see that this was something God had been wanting from me for a very, very long time. But I thought I knew better. I wish I'd spent my whole life giving God's word to all those who would listen. But it took God to find another way in for me to understand what His will is for me and to walk away from the self-destructive behaviors I had been living my life by. Now that I know, His word echoes in all that I do. I feel constant contact with Him. I'm always waiting to hear from Him. What is the next thing I need to talk about? And He never ceases to tell me, including this verse. I create content on YouTube now just for the opportunity to sit here for just a few minutes with whomever will listen to these words. Because I know I can spend all the hours that I spend on this content, and if you do it for 20 years and it brings one person to Christ, then it was all worth it. I don't have to worry about being beaten and put in prison. I have none of those concerns that Jeremiah dealt with. So to me, there's no discernible reason why I should ever shy away from what God's will is for me. So I ask you, do you know what it is God wants from you? You know, it's one thing to have that burning inside of you that you can't hold the Word of God inside. It's another thing to struggle with trying to understand what it is God wants for you. I get it. I'm almost 60 years old, and I'm just now beginning to see what my real true job is. To answer the question of what God wants from you, there is ever only one place to go, the Word. The subject of God's will for us falls into two major categories. The will of God that He has clearly revealed in Scripture, which revealed His mind and heart, and God's will for individuals making personal life decisions. God has been clear about what has been called His moral will revealed in Scripture. Simply put, if we want to know what God's will, we must learn God's Word. That's where His will is revealed. It's important to understand God's desire for sinners to know His great love for them. He said Himself that He is patient toward us. 2 Peter 3 verse 9, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Regarding doing God's will in Christian living, the Apostle Paul encouraged his believers to be thoughtful, saying in Ephesians 5, verse 17, Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. He continued instructing Christians to do the will of God from the heart in Ephesians 6, verse 6. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Christians are also instructed to rejoice 
and pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. But how can we develop that sense of understanding how God is leading our personal lives into his plan and will for us? Well, counsel comes from the wise King Solomon. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. That is one of my favorite all-time verses in the Bible, leaning on him and not my own understanding. Our personal trust in God's goodness and wisdom is vital to receiving his lending. The temptation for many of us is trusting our own merely human thinking, which is something I did a lot of. And that's where I got off track early in my adulthood. This disregards God's goodness and his wisdom. The object of our pursuit should be counsel from God's word. Listen to me closely here. There are no questions that the word doesn't answer. Your counsel is the word of God. If you seek him there, you're gonna find him there. If your heart is set on finding his will for, for your life, go to the one place that you know you'll find the answer, his word. It's always with you, always guiding you, and it will be where you find refuge. Psalms 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. If you're seeking God's will for your life, I advise you to go look and learn this prayer. It's in Psalms, it's 143 verse 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. If you've watched enough of my Faith Changes Everything videos, you know that I don't often quote something from man. I draw my inspiration from God's Word, but I do appreciate from time to time things that I read. And, and, and this quote that I read really kind of fit into this message really well. It's from Professor Frederick uh, Fivery Five Bruce, they call him F.F. Bruce. He is a Rylands professor at the University of Manchester who is one of the most influential evangelical scholars of the second half of the 20th century. F.F. Bruce, F. F. Bruce said this, Where love is the compelling power, there is no sense of strain or conflict or bondage in doing what is right. The man or woman who is compelled by Jesus' love and empowered by his spirit does the will of God from his heart. I couldn't agree more. Brothers and sisters, every single day that passes is another day closer to whatever end is foretold for each of us. As we walk down life's path, I believe it's worth considering committing our remaining days to finding out his will for us and following that will to the end. I'm the perfect example of that. It's never too late to follow God's plan for our life. But again, as I said before, to find his will, we need Jesus. We need the word. Who is the only one who really knows the way for you to fulfill God's purpose for your life? <laughs> God is. Jesus said in John 14, verse six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In that verse, he didn't say, I'll show you the way. He didn't say, I'll give you a road map or I'll teach you which direction you need to head. He said, I am the way. I am the way. Jesus knows the way. He is your way. He is the answer to all life's questions. I close every message with the opportunity for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and start your journey of salvation that this very day, right now, today. If you found yourself here and you want that for your life, I encourage you to pray these words that I will pray right now. Dear God, I want to be part of your family. You said in your word that if I acknowledge that you raised Jesus from the dead, and that I accept him as my Lord and Savior, I would be saved. So God, 
I now say that I believe you raised Jesus from the dead. And that he is alive and well. I accept him now as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept my salvation from sin right now. Thank you, Jesus, for I am now saved. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving me, saving me, and giving me eternal life with you. Amen. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, praise God. The angels are singing for your safe soul today, right now. I do hope that you found something in today's message that will encourage you to start thinking about what it is that God wants you to do in your life. Each, each one of us has a job. God has, has said that in His Word. God did not put you down here to just be here. I love the old saying, you can't lean on a shovel and pray for a hole. If you want to know what His will is, you need to start digging the hole. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for being here today. Feel free to reach out to me if you need a prayer, if you want to talk about this or any other of the messages on my channel. Speaking of that, there are many, many more messages out there. You just need to look for the, the little faith emblem that's on the thumbnail for a little bit of everything. And I'll put a, a picture of it right here on the, on the video. You find that faith emblem, you know there's a faith message on that video. I do hope that you have a wonderful day and don't forget, don't forget, God loves you so very much and so do I. Until next time.